Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today, the group B3 will, present, will be presenting about the climate cooling evaporator, which is experiment 2, our last experiment. But the application that we make is based on the food and beverages industry, specifically the production of juice concentrate in the industry of food and beverages. Like, in order for to make orange juice, we need to use climate cooling evaporator in order to make the concentration more concentrated. So, the members of these groups are as follows. So the presentation will go, uh, Shahi will talk about your the introduction, objectives, and customer requirement, and, all, and process description to that extent. Also, and then it will be followed by Farhan talking about the process flow diagram. Hafiz will be talking then about the unit description and equipment specifications of all the materials involved within the production of juice. And then Faris will come in for the safety and other considerations um, presentation and then I'll come back to talk about economic analysis and then Shahid will do the conclusion after everything is done and there's no Q&A for this session, I'm sorry about that. So, um, I'll pass it over to Shahid. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmad Shahid. Basically, I'm going to present about the introduction part. Basically, in our experiment, it is mainly about the evaporation and the grinding clean evaporator. Evaporation is a process where the vapor from the boiling point solution is removed and a more concentrated solution remains. And the, uh, the climbing helium evaporator, also known as CFE, is a special type of evaporator which provides a high heat transfer condition and a short resistance time for the solution being evaporated. Magnitude CFEs are used to concentrate solutions such as fruit juices that can be damaged by prolonged heat. The second part of the presentation is the objectives. The experiment came with a few objectives that we intend to achieve, which are The first one is to study how the climbing medium evaporator is applied in the food and beverage industry, specifically in the production of juice concentrate. The second objective is to conduct a thorough research at the customer requirement and market demand of the society towards the product. The third objective for this report is to establish a relationship from the results of the experiment conducted to the unit operation led to with the industry chosen. And last but not least is to instill awareness of the application of the experiment with the industry chosen. Right. Basically, there are three scopes for this report. The first scope is food and beverage industry, specifically the production of juice concentrate. Second scope is the Malaysian market demand and customer requirement. And the third scope is the Malaysian economic status and its currency <coughs> standing. The, the, the next part is the customer requirement. The first is the analysis of type of customers. Consumption of orange juice is relatively high in households with children and high income families, as well as in, in households headed by younger adults. Overall, it can be concluded that households with children show a higher consumption rate of orange juice than households without children. The second part is the customer's choice. Basically, single serve drinks in plastic containers are typically attractive to younger customers. However, the most popular container type for households that drink orange juice is still custard, followed by plastic. Only one in five would buy orange juice in bottles, and fewer than 10% would buy in cans. Larger households and households with children tend to buy orange juice in plastic containers. And another poll also showed that Malaysians were choosing their juices based on taste and the quality of the drink. The last part of customer requirement is the market demand. In a market call conducted by market research company Nielsen last year, the brand, the brand supplies all top flavor categories in Malaysia with orange, topping these with a market demand of 30%, 38% followed by Lanchi, and 90% and apple at 9%. Third, we concluded from the post that the orange juice has the highest market demand in Malaysia. Just Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Farhan from Mohamed and today I would like to present about the process flow diagram. So, okay, based on this flow diagram, so this is basically the, the routes where the fruits will uh, going to throw. So the first three, the fruits going to go to the mining and pumping process and will, after that will go will undergo enzymatic machine, pressing, aroma stripping and lastly verification. So moving to the next slide. 
So what is actually mean by milling and pulping process? So basically, a milling or pulping process is a process of reducing the size of the fruits. <coughs> it is usually done after the washing, uh, washing process uh, to remove the soil and also microorganisms from the fruits. So uh, commonly, the equipment used are the rotating weeding knives depending on the product's quality. Next. So for the process of enzymatic meshing, Enzymatic meshing is basically a process of adding enzyme which is pectinated to improve the texture of the milk fruits. So before the uh, enzyme is added, <coughs> the fruit fab is uh, first stirred in holding tank for 15 to 20 minutes so that the enzyme activities are oxidized. Moving to the next slide, uh, pressing process. So in order to obtain more juice, the pulp will, will undergo pressing process to produce more and more juice. So, more systems for extracting juice from apples and similar fruit pulp use some method of pressing juice from clothes and very thickness in which foamage is retained. Foamage is a pulpy residue remaining after the fruit has been crushed in order to extract its juice. Uh, so moving to the next process, aroma stripping. So basically, uh, aroma stripping is the removing of contact aroma compounds in the vapor phase obtained to fall falling from evaporator and subsequently trapped by the colonization in aroma recovery unit. So the efficiency of the trapping uh, varies depending on the particular conditions and also the aroma compound. So for the clarification process, clarification is basically is necessary in order to obtain a bright, clear product and also uh, with low viscosity. Clarification of juice involves uh, the use of two final agents which are platinum and also silica solution. So after the clarification process, the cloudy juice will be divided into two, which are supernatant sediment and also supernatant. Thank you. So now I'm ready, so as a fish, I will proceed to the part B of the process flow diagram where we will see that from the cloudy juice it will convert uh, to percentage. So from the part A we, we got two products which is sediment and supernatant that will undergo the next process. So the first process that we go through is a vacuum filtration where the sediment will go into the vacuum filtration and the supernatal will uh, straight away go to the centrifugation and then we will ski into the uh, finding and then uh, the, we, we will go to the concentration process where our, uh, where our report are concerned which is a uh, climbing curve evaporator is being used in this process and then we will get the concentrated juice. So for the first part of first process of the party, uh, the filtration, specifically for vacuum filtration, is basically is a me mechanical process designed for clarification by removing solids from from the high value liquid food. And then uh, one of the filter process, here, uh, as we know in this in this in this process, we are using the vacuum filtration, which is one of the filtration process. And it is because it is simple and reliable machines widely used in the fruit, uh, fruit juice uh, production industry. So next for the centrif centrifugation where the supernatant will go through, uh, and it is uh, it is actually one of the extraction methods and to remove large piece of less large pieces of debris, leaving most of the small particles in the suspension. Uh, the, the type of centrifug centrifugation. Uh, used is a cone and basket uh, because uh, they resulted in high levels of suspended solids and a high investment cost for organic it means they, they, will, they will reduce our cost and produce high efficiency and then for the concentration where our cons our, our research uh, concern this is where the climbing flow evaporator applied evaporating systems such as rising flow evaporator falling flow evaporator can be used for this process due to sensitivity of produce to heat, particular effects of evaporation with SNS recovery are commonly used. So the CFP is an uh, example of the multiple effect of evaporation with SNS recovery. And the, the main function of the, this, this kind of evaporator is to remove the vapor which will leave a uh, more concentrated solution. So uh, what, what, uh, maybe someone wondering why, why we choose CFP? Because it provides the short resistance time for the solution being evaporated, meaning that the solution will, will spend a very short time in the in the in the CFT to become concentrated. Concentrated. So for our experiment analysis to, to relate what uh, our experiment uh, our experiment and this 
uh, in this in this research where we will see uh, for the steam flow rate uh, rate on given pressure. So uh, theory theoretically the the short residence time can be achieved by higher liquid, which can be done by by lowering by lower the by which, uh, higher, uh, yeah, which can be achieved by higher liquid or steam flow rate down new tube down tube in CF, down in the tube of CFT. So our our research agree with this theory and because in the type of formation of, uh, of first bubble and the solution to boil decrease when the steam flow rates were increased which means we have a low resistance time. We will see the results. So we have seen uh, for the steam flow rates 394 SLPM we will get we will get uh, the time to time for the first bubble to appear with 59 seconds and with the 392 SLPM 91 seconds which which we see uh, the the lower the steam flow rate we will we will get the higher time for the first first bubble to appear. Okay, next. So uh, this uh, the, this is uh, the graph to represent our result, which uh, which uh, which which telling us that the higher higher steam flow rate will uh, will be higher steam flow rate will reduce the time will reduce the time on time the the residence time in the evaporator, which agrees the theory we, we need to have higher steam flow rate to to get the shorter time for the residence time. So uh, for the safety part, I will uh, pass to my colleague and colleague. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Imak Farika Imam Dazuni and I will be presenting about safety and conservation. So firstly, how to manage safety? How to manage safety if we are doing a risk assessment? What is the risk assessment? We do an assessment to identify problems and the hazard and how do we control them. Next is, we need to put the sensing measures in place to control them. This is also related to the risk assessment. We do, it, we do the risk assessment using the plan, do, check and act approach. Next is about the safety of machinery, plant, equipment and safety risk assessment. About the machine and plant, we consider how the workers with machinery. They need to know how to use it properly so the machine will be always in a good condition. Next, we have to have adequate maintenance arrangement in place. Maintenance is very important to ensure the machine is working properly every time we are working with them. Next, uh, like I said earlier, we have to put sensible measures in place to control them and use the plan, do, check and act approach. Next is about the personal protective equipment or workers. We could call it PPE. The workers have to make sure to use this PPE at work. This PPE could protect the workers uh, from many various hazards at work, whether from chemical or machine or anything at the plant. The example of PPE is safety helmet, gloves, eye protection, high visibility clothing, safety footwear and safety helmet. The PPE also includes the respiratory protective equipment which we can we could call RPE. Next is we have to know about the harmful substances. In the plant there is many harmful substances which can be created which will harm your health. These substances, these substances could be dust, gases, fumes that you bring in or liquid gel and corrosion. If have to come by these substances, this at work is preventable. Many substances can harm our health, but if you use we use it properly, they will never come out now. Next is about the workers. The workers at the plant who must know how to work safely without risking their health. They need to have the information that is easy to understand and follow. They have to be aware of the hazard and risk they face. They have to measure the place to control the risk and how to follow any emergency property. Uh, about the workplace, the workplace means any permanent or part of the 
which are made available to any person at the place of work. Test could place must consider for all of lighting, ventilation, temperature, toilet, and washing facilities. Uh, the workplace also must consider about the disabled person who may have the Next, I will be talking to my city On the economic analysis, we divided our economic analysis into four aspects. First, we will look into the total initial investment cost, then the human resource and training requirement, followed by annual production cost, and lastly, the profit loss analysis. So, for the total investment cost, basically, from the projected investment that we have, we figured out that the grant rule that we need to invest is at the bottom right corner of the slide, which is approximately 2.5 million ringgit. So, you can see by the shares of the initial investment fund, a lot of it comes from the fixed investment, which comes from levies, building and table work, machinery and equipment, vehicles and office furniture and equipment, which constitutes to a 78.91% of share when it comes to the contribution to the total amount of total investment cost. Also, it's also worth noting that because machinery and equipment is mostly based from foreign um, places or foreign companies, we have to import them into Malaysia. So we figured that the approximate cost for machinery equipment from uh, the foreign um, company would be around 665,000 ringgit, which constitutes 27.31% of the total marginal amount coming from total investment cost. Next. Then we have human resource and training requirement, whereby we have 37 people working, which we think that is enough, at least the minimum amount of people that is needed in order to run the factory. Um, so in terms of training, you need to have two weeks on this. I would think that uh, people who need to go to training have to go through two weeks on the job and it needs to be done by the expert of the equipment supplier. Next. Um, who should be trained or who should be trained it will be like the production head, quality controller, mechanics and electricians. Um, and the cost of training will be around 28,500 ringgit. So uh, uh, going to the annual production for a full capacity, which is at year three. Why do we need a full capacity after year three? Is because we think that when it comes to the first and second year, we are still in the developing and the startup phase of the company. So we think by the year three, we can start having a full capacity when it comes to the operation of the um, production line. So if you see at the end of production cost, we can get a total production cost of one uh, 1,729,000 ringgit with the total operating cost costing in about 76.09% of um, the uh, the total production cost. It's also worth noting that labor directs, labor overhead and administration cost will also uh, taken down into consideration when it comes to our projectile of annual production cost, which means that our production cost fully utilizes and fully encompasses everything that might come into place when it comes to um, making a uh, uh, manufacturing line. Next. So if you want to talk about the profit loss analysis, then we need to talk about like the income statement, right? Because that's the only way for us to look at how we know whether there's profit or not. So we think that when it comes to looking in the future, we, need to need, I mean, we, we, we are very determined that we can get a very stable profit when it comes to from year 6 to year 11. Because we, if you can see, there's a lot of marginal profit coming from that part of the year, which means that by the time, but in its lifetime, the profit of the company is approximately 570,000 ringgit to 570,000 ringgit in its lifetime. Half a million ringgit can be given, can be done as profit through this operation. So we think that the project will be a very, very profitable one. In, to conclude, I invite. The most efficient way to increase the volumetric amount of output is by reducing the pressure below the vacuum and higher is preferred in food, uh, food and beverage industry, specifically the making of this concentrate. That's all from us for this presentation. Thank you.